afternoon, guys. Thank you for being here for Real Estate Business Planning Clinic. Right? We're here to talk about your business because if you don't have a clear idea of where you're going, how can you possibly get there? I mean, imagine just getting in your car saying, I'm going to get to Chicago, and you don't look at a map, you don't have any clue how to get there, I mean, what do you do? Just start driving? Sounds silly, but isn't that how we do real estate? Yeah. No, you don't have a phone, no maps, and you got to figure it out. I see you there. Oh, that's my right? Exactly. Stop at a gas station and hope someone else can advise you. So why do we treat our real estate business the same way? We get our license and every company in the area says, hey, go sell a house. Great. How do I do that? Well, I don't know. Just go sell it. Right? There's no blueprint. It starts off with what do you want and how can we get you to help you get there? Right? So the question we always ask you is what do you want based on a profit number, right? What do you want to make in a year? Because if you can tell me, I want to make 50,000, 100, 200,000, and I know the average sales price in the area and commission, I can figure out how many sales you will need a year to be successful. Sounds really simple, yet how many of you came to us and said, I've never done that before, I just sell something. Right? No one's ever asked for that before. I just sell houses, right? So I realized how can we help you grow if you don't even understand the basics about why we're doing it and how we're going to get there. So that's what's really cool about this. And every month we're going to do the business plan to just revisit why it's important and what are the important measurements of your business. That's really what we're doing today. And our conversation here is I want to create a culture of productivity. And all that means is that we still have culture. Like, I still care about you. I want to have happy hours and fun events. Yet, if I don't ask you how your business is going, how do you plan to be productive? And my conversation is more purposeful. I can ask you how to get there based on your numbers and what you told me you wanted. Right? So that's what we're going to work on. So that's where it comes down to. And just to kind of give it a backstory, right? So as team leader... I am leader of the team, is that right? Yes. You guys elected me. Yes. So you know what I wasn't doing, and I finally did the math. I wasn't putting together that I have a team, and I should tell my team's numbers more often. So we just hit 50 agents. Woo! We are at 50. That means my team has 50 agents. You know what I figured out? I said, okay, what have we done this year, team? So I've looked since January to July 31st, and my team, which is you amazing people, have sold 370 homes and $80 million of volume. Woo! Why am I not telling enough people that? So I'm changing it, and I'm sorry, I didn't lead that way. So I will start telling people more that I lead an amazing team, and that we're always looking to grow, and we're always going to get better, and my team is based on you guys being amazing and your sales. And to put it in perspective, because even people who weren't with KW last year, you're in my pipeline of reporting now. And last year, totally, we did 500 homes. And we're now in August and already at 400 almost. So we're going to surpass that. We're up 125% as a group. That's exciting, right? That needs to be tell, told to more people. And that's what we're going to get better at, is telling our story. So I'm going to start by leading better in that conversation and story. And then it all comes down to about why we're having this conversation. So that's what we're going to work on today is what are those conversations? Why do I need to know them? How do I have clarity around those goals? And how do we get there? So it all starts off with the Millionaire Real Estate book. So who here has read it? Anyone in the room? All right. Who here has heard of it? Okay, we've got people who've heard of it. So the Millionaire Real Estate book was basically written back in 2004 based by Gary Keller's research. So it's not written by just one Keller Williams agent's data set, right? He went and researched the top agents who were making over a million dollars a year in the real estate business. And you know what he found out? That there were four models of success for that. The first was an economic model. And all the economic model is to make X amount of dollars, I need to sell X amount of homes, right? That's the economic model. That's mostly what we're gonna talk about today. The second one is a lead generation model. For every 52 people I don't know, I will get one appointment. Versus if I do know people and talk to them 33 times a year, I should get 12 to one ratio on my database. Eventually, when you're doing your business and can plan it, then you have a better idea of where am I gonna get my conversion, right? So that's the lead generation model. 
the budget model is in order for me to net the most amount of money, I need to not spend this much of a dollars on Zillow, right? Where am I spending my money? Because you can make a million dollars, can you keep a million dollars? That's a different conversation if you're spending all this money to get there. And then finally, to get to the million dollar mark, it all starts with an organizational model. Who's on the team to help me get where I need to go? And typically, it starts with an admin, transaction coordinator, then buyer's agent, then listing agent, right? To truly build your team. So we start with those foundations, and today, the little handout I gave you on the second page has these models in it. So this is the business planning clinic. It says pre-class worksheet, but we're gonna work it together because you wouldn't have known how to work it if we didn't work it together, right? So it starts with the four models we're talking about today. And most of our time is gonna really be spent on the economic model and the lead generation to get you right to do more business. Eventually, you'll be ready to do the finances part to really run it as a true business. Because then you should know your profit and loss statement. I made this much money, I spent this much, where can I cut expenses and work there? Because as we start heading into this market that it gets more competitive than ever, ever and we've got prices going up every year that can't sustain we're going to shift at some point and a shifting market means you're gonna have to finally say hey you know what maybe I can't spend this much money on this product and I can't spend you're gonna have to cut expenses because if your business doesn't change and your expenses keep going up that's the person that gets out of the business yes Eric if we're thinking like a true business owner shouldn't we shouldn't we be using the language that we're investing in our business because like, when you spend money you don't get that back right but when you invest money you're expecting to so I think that anywhere we're spending or investing money in our business, it should be in places where we're expecting a return on it. Absolutely. Gary Keller says for every dollar you spend, you should get four back. That's, that's interesting, right? How much money are you getting back? It's going to be scary. So we're not advanced enough to go that far yet, but I want you to see the whole picture. And really in this worksheet today, we're just going to work the two of the models, really mostly the economic. Because you can't get where you're going if you don't have an idea of what you need to do. Right? And then we'll go to the, the organization chart we're not even gonna talk about today, but that's really thinking the end in mind one day, right? If you get there, and the model says, on your own, you can do about 36 deals yourself before you need to hire an admin, buyer's agent, right? And then you should have enough business coming in. And every person you add to your team should bring you at least 12 more deals a year to your business. So we're gonna start treating it there. And the reason I brought that up is I'm trained to lead you guys the same way you're going to be trained to lead your team one day. Because we have agents in our market and in Keller Williams itself that follow the motor real estate agent model. And the sixth level is kind of where I am now, which is you manage the team and someone else does the listing, someone else works with the buyers, someone else does the admin work. And then your job is to coach and lead the team to be productive. And then eventually, the seventh level is you don't even do that. You're the CEO of it and someone else does all. Right? Does that make sense? So Wendy Pakistan is a woman who 10 years ago, she was a teacher making barely $30,000 a year. Her husband, Jay, helped co-wrote right, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book and the one thing with Gary Keller. So they sat down and said, what's our net worth? Because Gary is a high-minded person and he asked them what their financials were. And I think their total assets came out to like less than $6,000. It was crazy. So imagine having already worked 10 years in their careers and they had about $6,000 to show their name and they didn't own their house and they didn't own their car. It was a little bit of a wake up call for them. So what they realized was Wendy decided to get into real estate and Jay decided to become the millionaire investor. So they both followed the models of the book. Fast forward 10 years later, she is now on the sixth level, has a team doing stuff so she can do more of what she wants and she made 2.5 million last year. So that she can do that, right? So she followed the model. So I'm telling you, you have somebody who was educated, who didn't have any idea about wealth building, and was able to build it and grow to that point. So right now, I'm kind of the Wendy in that sense of I'm leading you. The $80 million in production is a successful collective, right? I'm paid to be here and coach and train you and help you guys get your goals and drive it to more success. So that's why I want to point out, because you're going to notice a, a similarity between your four conversations and mine, they're actually kind of the same thing. So does anybody know the four conversations? Aaron, you don't have it. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. That's why we're having this conversation. So I'll pass out these packets because I figured if I gave it to you now, you'd all know the answer. So I will, not that one. These are the ones here. No, no that's all handed. That's a you keep one of these. Jenny's got one, there you go. Then hand those out. All right. So the four conversations start with 
listing appointments, right? The book of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent is voted on leads, listings, and leverage. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't work with a buyer, but typically a buyer is about one sale, right? Yet, they think if you do a listing, it should be two sales because you should get the listing sold and somebody's gonna call the sign and you should get a buyer lead from somewhere. And if you're really purposeful, you really should get three sales because why didn't you get a referral from the clients you're working with and the people that are calling you, right, that you're getting business from? So that's kind of the philosophy around why we focus so much on our listings. So this will be listings right here. I'll put it down here, right? So listing appointments. Listing appointments, A-P-P-T, right? So from there, what is the goal of a listing appointment? To take a listing, right. So you wanna take a listing. Now in the middle, we have a wall of value. And the wall of value we'll talk about in a little bit, but really we're just focusing on the core conversation for now. Wall of value is just how do you explain to people that are hiring you, or the buyers or sellers, what your value is to them, right? And that's just not, that's really, it's, it's metrics, like how you rank our language of real estate, that kind of stuff. So from there, the goal is to get to the closing table. So then our fourth conversation is closings. How many closings do you have? which ultimately leads to profit. How much money did you make or your GCI? So the four conversations, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I love you guys and I'm happy to talk about how your weekend was and I'm gonna do that for a few seconds and I'm gonna ask you, how are your appointments going? How many listings have you taken? And how many closings have you had? Because what is that going to end up at the end? Profit, that's where you make money. Any challenge you're having, I had someone tell me once, um, he needs new tires on his car. He didn't know what he's going to do. I said, what would one more listing do for you? What would one extra sale, right? Well, it's not about having lots of money. It's what can that money do for you? So that's kind of the conversation why we're having it. Is that okay of a conversation to have with you guys if you know where you're going? Don't you think that would create a culture of productivity if we're asking you these questions over and over and over again? Yeah, so that's why I wanted to talk about it and be more purposeful because I don't think we were getting the message across clearly. Right? We didn't understand the importance of what this CGI is, Career Growth Initiative, which is really based off of already a proven model of the Growth Initiative. And the Growth Initiative, seven years ago, was rolled out to the team leaders. And the Growth Initiative is similar to yours. You know what mine is? Listing appointments. Well, I need to have agent appointments, right? So I still have an appointment, APPT. What's the goal of an agent appointment? For them to sign a contract and to join us. So we call that a growth goal, but really that just means I need agents to join. And then out of the agents that join, people will fall out, right? So the real estate industry as a whole has 30% attrition. What that means is life happens, they move out of the area, they get another job, and 30% of our entire industry will just leave for no reason of our own, right? So they call that attrition. So that means the goal is that I wanna net. I wanna end the month with more people here than that left, right? Because that's how we keep growing. And you know what that leaves me? Profit, same as you. So I'm speaking the same language as you are. My listing appointments are agent appointments. People that join are signing a contract with me. That's like taking a listing. So if I have a month like July where I had nobody join, what do you think happens to profit? What do you think happens to growth if that happens? Right? It's no different than you guys going out taking no listing. And that's through, or having no sales really is what it comes down to, right? No sales. So we don't want that to happen. That's why we have to get here. So I'm just putting in the perspective that I'm speaking the same language you guys are. It may be called different things, but I have the same thing being asked every day by my leadership, by you guys. You should ask me how my appointments are going. You guys should ask who's joined this month, who, who's left. Because that's ultimately going to lead us to profit. So this is a two-way streak. I'm not here to say I'm your manager, do this. I'm here to say, hey, I'm having the same conversation you are, and if I ask you how your appointments are, you're welcome to ask me how my appointments are going, right? And if you're not happy with the answer, then you just challenge me. Hey, Jay, what are you gonna do to get more appointments this month? So I'm okay if you wanna throw it right back in my face. How are your right? appointments going this month? Great, I'm at 10 now, I was at three before we left, so. <laughs> and, we're, thank you, that's a great question. So I'm at three appointments, 10 appointments for the month now. I went to seven open houses Sunday. So I've met with 10 agents, um, and um, we've hired three, which brought us to 50. 
So that's good. We're getting free, and we're on track to do a profit of maybe about 10,000. Now here's the goals though, to put it in perspective, my appointment goals are 40 a month. So I got a lot of working to do this week and next week, as you'll notice. And then my goal is to hire or gross 10 a month. With the goal of netting five is their standard, Aaron and I agreed on a standard of seven, right? So keeping more people. Because our goal was really, we did those numbers to get to 100 by the end of the year. So we're at 50 now, and that's great. We're going to celebrate it tomorrow, make a big hoopla about it. And we're going to enjoy it for a millisecond, because we got to keep going to 75, then to 100. And I did the math. So ultimately, I have to do a gap analysis on, if my goal was to be at 100 by the end of the year, we're at 50 now in August. What do I need to do for September through December to reach goal? And you know what? I need to hire 12.4 agents. It can be done. It will happen because you have no idea how we're ready to rock and roll. And do you think I would have had that clarity if I didn't even know where I was going? What would have ever in my world all this fantasy said, hey, normally they hire 10, but I'm going to get 12 this month if I didn't have an idea where I'm going. So we're going to help you have clarity around the goals that you set and then do the same conversation. And accountability is not saying, Aaron, you're doing a horrible job. It's saying, hey, you committed to 40 people this month, or two appointments, or two sales. What are you doing to make that up? And how do we help get you there? We're here to help each other, right? So that's why I wanted to bring that up. So I've got a quick video that will explain this a little bit better, because I think they do a great job of explaining how it goes there, but that's the conversations we're gonna have. When you come into my office, I have this up for me with my numbers on there. This sheet here, um, you're gonna have a version of this that you're gonna be able to write your goals in and keep it. That's something you can laminate and keep track of it, right? Because that's the conversation we're gonna have with you, that you should know that number and I can pull it up. So the good news is, I'm gonna show you the calculator today that I have access to so that you can see your goals and go there and hit it if you are. So you got more papers or we run out? Yeah, we, okay. so we I scan, can scan, make sure he gets a copy, yeah. please. All right, so I'm gonna play the video. I gotta play it on this side because the video doesn't love that side. So let's make sure my volume's up because we know how this all works. I've learned my lessons. Volume's here. Four conversations. Oh, don't start over again. Of the Career Growth Initiative, or CTI, are designed to be transformative opportunities because they focus on the critical levers of your business. The first conversation is about listing appointments because appointments are the primary lever of your business. The second is listings taken because listings are your high leverage, maximum earning opportunity and they generate additional buyer business. Next is closings, listings and buyers because they lead to your GCI. Finally, we talk about profit because it is the fundamental measure of a healthy business. And when you are able to quantify and talk to the benefits of the value you deliver, you will attract listings and create closings. The Career Growth Initiative gives you the tools to run your business on purpose. Start by working with your market center leadership to set your profit goal for the year. This is big. This is what will fund your life. Then work backwards to what that means in terms of activities today. Then achieve those goals through our award-winning training and coaching. This is huge. You are able to build the business you want so that you can thrive. The starting point for this journey to greater productivity is the CGI calculator. The Market Center for Leadership will work with you to use this tool to set and track your productivity goals. With the CGI calculator, you can implement the first tool of the CGI, listing management, by creating a yearly plan for profitability through growth in your market share. Next is listings monthly. To ensure you stay on track monthly with listings taken to achieve your yearly goal. With the pipeline report for buyers and sellers, you can identify on a daily basis whether your activities will turn your goals into reality. This brings us to your value package. When those goals turn into reality, the resulting growth in your market share will appear in your agent trend report. Additionally, the trend report gives you a way of assessing the opportunities in your business. The language of real estate, or lore, 
tool enables you to speak to the value of your business's growth compared to your board, your market center, or even your subdivision. Local Expert enables you to create your story of expertise to underscore your validity to your clients. Finally, when you have set goals, are tracking progress to those goals, and assessing and sharing your value, you will see results in your GCI tool and will be able to identify when you break even. The Career Growth Initiative gives you the opportunity to engage in purposeful business conversations with your market center leadership team so that you are able to enjoy growing production and profitability. And empowering all of our people to enjoy profitability in their business, it's a great part of our culture. Ask your Market Center leadership team about how to get started in the Career Growth Initiative today. You don't need to ask, you're here today, perfect. <laughs> so wasn't, it's a little more important than me trying to explain some of the tools to you. So on the back side of the four conversations is the tools that we're talking about, right? An explanation of this. So when we see the four conversations, they're all tied around these tools to help you. So we're gonna spend the majority of our time on the calculator. Most people already set your goals to be in conversations. We're gonna have clarity around those goals. We're gonna help our new people that are here checking us out today to learn what their goals are gonna be because they probably didn't have them yet, right? And help build it up. So that's what we're working on today. And then this sheet is just what's gonna help you. So this is something you might laminate, you might want to learn. And here's what I learned in Mega Camp this year. So I went to an instructor development workshop, and then the whole week I was there at Mega Camp. It all came down to understanding that everything we teach starts with this conversation. So every class we have, everything we learn, because if I can't have a business conversation with you, how can I ever help you achieve what you want? Because we all say it leads to a quietness, which leads to closing, which leads to profit, are we purposeful with that conversation, right? So that's really what we want to build up to. So I'm going to start with where do you even get these tools? So who knows what website you can go on to access these tools? Not you, Erin. Who else? Connect. What? Connect. Connect. KW Connect. So KW Connect, and I, I hit the bar for a reason for that one. KW Connect is our learning platform. This is where all the resources are going to be. So on KDB Connect, there's a tab on top that says Growth, and there's the Career, Career Growth Initiative. So this is going to give you access to your calculator, plus all the tools that we mentioned today, and they're in their handouts. So your handout is every tool that we talked about, language of real estate, your pipeline reports, all those tools are here in the handouts, and I'm going to show you where they are here, because you can access digital copies. And the future of this whole system, by the way, is it's going to be built into our technology automatically. Because Kelly, our artificial intelligence, can help you look at your goals right now. And eventually, it's going to be in real time, not just a delay of last month's sales versus now. And it's getting better and better. So everything they're building is going to be built from this technology and conversations as well to make it easier for you. Like, the system will build your pipeline report because you just had coffee with John Smith instead of you having to add to it somehow. <laughs> so there's some really cool stuff coming down the line. So on this first, it says, what are your goals for the month? Now mine are all over the place because I keep using my tool to talk to other agents. So I set it based on their goal so I can quickly tell them their calculations. So this was on the point that we had this morning where one of our agents said, I got my license a couple months ago and I'm not hitting like as much as I would or she got a year ago. I'm not getting the production I want and I'm a little jealous because someone who was at the same time I was made $90,000 last year. Now that was the number, now made is different than netting, right? Who knows that they actually made that because they probably didn't take out taxes. However, I get the conversation. So she felt like, how do I get there? I don't see a plan. So I said, okay, let's take that 90,000 and I put her goals in. And the 90,000 told me that you need two closings a month if your average sales price is 250. Because she wanted to go for a 300 price range, about 250, then you'll need two sales a month. If it's 150 and you want to make that much, it might be three, right? So it's having a conversation and you get the clarity around having that number because now it's not what should I do this month, it's how do I get two appointments or get two sales? How many people do I need to meet with? Who do I have conversation with, right? It helps you be purposeful. Because you can't have a million dollar real estate business if you're not purposeful in what you're running. 
And the millionaire agent book is just a title. It could be the $100,000 agent, it could be the $30,000 agent. The tool's the same. It's just either you work at a really high level or not. We run this office as a giant mega agent would run their office. So we try to get as efficient as possible. Key roles are there so we can all have our specialty. Day one, you're everything, right? You are your marketing, you are your team, you are your admin, you are your showing staff. So eventually you'll build to that. So I'm gonna start with the calculator because that's really the first conversation. So this is the team's calculator. Um, has anybody not set their goal or do they want to revisit their goal? I'll give you the, the class code. It works for 24 hours because sometimes the system says you can't set yours. Um, there's a paper copy in here so that you can do yours. Um, so this is the paper version of what we're going through. That way you can write it out and then we'll figure your calculations. So if you write that code down, I'll put it up top. O eight two zero. Do you know why we would lock it from your goal being set? Because how likely do we right now say, I want to lose 10 pounds. Oh, I lost three, that's good enough. I lost two, oh, I'm not gonna lose weight anymore. Like, we let ourselves off the hook. So the only reason they locked it from letting you change it is so that you have to talk to one of us to change your goal so that we can coach you or ask you more questions. It's not to say you're bad or you did anything wrong, right? What did I just do with my goals? I'm not hitting my goals yet. And I can still make up the end of the year to finish where I wanted to if I ramp up my activities. That's all we're going to do. How can we help you see what you need to do so that you don't wander around going, I can't do this real estate stuff, I'm not going to make it. There's no room for that here. We've all had days like that. Aaron, have you had days like that? Where you're like, what the heck am I doing in this business? Scott, you've had that. Like, who hasn't? Even if you're new. The goal is, though, it can be done. Will be done, and that's what we're here to help. With. Can I just add to that? So I guess the whole the whole purpose of this is so we can all come together and encourage each other and mastermind around what our challenges are to really help us get where we want to go in life. Right? Absolutely. So there are some market centers that one day I would love it if here we had all our goals goals posted outside of our offices or near our heads. Those market centers work at a high level because then I don't have to wonder. I can ask you, hey Jenny, how are your two appointments going this month? sales as well, right? I, if I know your goals, am I more likely to ask you how the goals are going? Or can I just say in general, how's it going? Oh, fine. Okay, have a nice day. Right? We can help each other. And then having those clarity means your goal may be really great because there's no wrong answer to it. So that's really the future where we're going to go with it. So I will set the goal. I'll show you mine. Um, set goal. Okay, so you should all be in the same screen I'm at. You hit set goal. It should look like this. We give you a description on the left in paragraph form, and on the right, it's some simple calculations. So the paper version I gave you is just a simple calculation. It starts with profit. When we say profit, I mean true profit. I paid my office dues. I paid my MLS dues. I paid the government, because you know they want their money. I took care of everything I could, and my goal is I want my bank account at the end of the year to have this much money in so that's the number you start with. And it's your number. It could be 100, 200, 300, a million. It doesn't matter what the number is. The calculator will adjust. Now, if you aren't sure around that, we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about where you want to be and how to get there, right? But have a number in there. Now, taxes, because we're independent contractor, they might charge you more, because obviously the more you make, taxes get weird. Um, I would rather take out more taxes than not enough taxes. So, um, 40% is what they typically have if you want to make 100000 The math is based on you doing a million in sales, right? So I went to 30. It doesn't do the math at exactly 30, but it gives me an idea that that's what I want to be. From there, we have what's called our cost of sales. So your cost of sales, meaning the most we're going to charge you for your business on your commission is a maximum as an individual agent of $23,000. $20,000 to the market center cap and 3000 to the that's the most we can charge in one year. If you're on a team, it's $10,000 a company dollar and $3,000 worth of franchise, right? So that's the most we're gonna charge you. And with the disappearing cap, by the way, you have the ability to make that zero if you want and not pay company dollar. So my new script, Aaron, I get to say that he probably loves is my goal is that you never pay company dollar again. 
Jay's, that's it. Jay's committed to that. So I am committed to that. Your goal, because really all you're doing is referring agents to me, just like you refer agents to buy a house in Chicago to the other agent. I don't need you to do the math and the science with them. I need you to simply just ask people, what are your goals? Because if they don't have any, they need them. And what are your challenges in your business? And whatever their answer is, get them to me, get them to a class, and when we get in a relationship, I'm gonna be asking these questions. I'm gonna help them get there, right? So then, we're rewarding you because you're $20,000 cap. If you brought us another capper, we'll take $5,000 off that. Meaning now your cost of sales is 18,000 for the year, not 23. How cool is that? What other companies invested in you not paying them money? That's just crazy to me, right? So that's why I want to say that, because this is the cost right now. You have the power, because the lowest I can go is 3,000. So you can pay as little as 3,000 or as much as 23. It's your choice, and it's equal opportunity for all of you. That's what's really cool. It's not me cutting a deal because Pat's cooler than you, Right, and say, hey, she does more sales, so Nancy, you're too new to the business, I'm not gonna make a deal for you. But Pat, she's been doing this for 30 plus years, I gotta make a deal for her. No, you all get the deal. All right, that's enough uh, high horse there. So that's the cost of sales, right? Monthly expenses, what are you gonna spend a month on stuff? And this is your business expenses, not your mortgage, not your car, like, what are you spending on your business a month? If you don't know, I would do at least 400 a month because what are you paying in the MLS a year? So $400 a month is $4,800 a year, right? Whatever that number is, so office fee, that's $80. So I put that in there, plus the MLS, plus maybe some marketing. So it's your budget, whatever that number is. Yeah, I Commission. Have yeah, question. Is, yeah. There, is there like a proposed budget in MRDA? So the goal is 30%. You should be spending 30% of the money you wanna make in your business. Now that's really at a high level. Most of you are gonna say, hey, I don't need to pay for this or that it'll be less than that, but that's really the goal. It shouldn't be more than that. Like you shouldn't be spending um, $50,000 a year on Zillow and make $50,000 a year. That would not make financial sense, and agents do it. So that's a good question, right? So that's kind of the foundation behind it. Commission, the goal is 3%, yet if you aren't confident enough to get three yet, you might put two and a half. Because if I were an agent not with this company, I'd be putting two and a half for them because they don't know how to ask for commission. And how do we know that? Who's going on deals right now where they're offering you 2%, 2.5%, or 1%? Because the agents aren't having better scripts for that. And by the way, that's Thursday's class where we're going to talk about how to negotiate a higher commission, how to do scripts around that. So that's the solution. So 3% commission, average sales price. If you don't have one, choose the average sales price for the area you're targeting. Here it's about 150, maybe 160. Um, this example, the agent said she was targeted 250 to 300. Think of your own sales if you have them and say my average price is 350, 800 if you're Leslie or one of those who sell a lot of luxury. Um, choose a number. And again, it's just going to help you get an idea of how many of those should you sell. And clearly, if you sell $80,000 homes, I'm going to have to sell three of those to equal one of this, right? So you can adjust your numbers. But imagine just breaking it down to the basics of how many you need to know. And then from there, it asks you seller focus. Because the whole goal is, I used to think this wrong. I thought it was 100% listings and not enough buyers. But the reality is the book teaches you a good real estate business is 50-50. 50% of your business should be sellers. And because you had sellers, you should get 50% buyers. That your business should be close to there. And if it's not, then we are actually taught how to coach you to go one way or the other. So if I know most of my business is buyers, then I know my opportunity is learn how to take more listings because they'll both go up when they level out, right? If my business is mostly listing, then I'm missing the opportunity of buyers that could be getting because they don't know how to work them and I might need a buyer's agent to help me. So I put 50-50 here. If you aren't sure, or if you're on a team and gonna do buyers only, you can't put zero in, I've tried it. It wants you to put a number. Um, if you're on a team though, you will have a team version of this and it should let you choose your role. But a lot of the teams now are hybrids, which means you're both a buyer's agent and a listing agent. So that math could be a little different. If you need help with that, I'll meet with the team individuals to help you there. This is just for simplicity. So 50% there. Now, conversion rate is listings taken to listings closings, meaning out of all the listings I took, which ones did I close? Now, I'd love for you all to say 100% of them sell. Okay, the reality is even the top best agents in the world don't sell 100%. So you want to have a margin of error. So is it 80%, 90%? And 
until you know it's 50. Because we'd rather you take more listings and get a higher conversion than not take enough listings and not make enough money, right? And then the last thing it asks for is how many appointments you need to go on and take the appointment. Well, if you're new, it's probably 50-50 because the reality is they usually choose the first person they talk to if they're not any of your other agents. So you have a 50-50 chance of walking in and getting it, right? As you get better, you're gonna learn even the top agents don't take 100%, they take like 90%, 95%, right? You want a little margin of error because it's gonna teach you to take extra listings to get the results that you want, take extra points to get there. So if everyone put in their numbers, then it should actually give you a little calculator on the left and tell you a story. Now the story's a little long-winded, so to save you that heartache of reading it all, I'll just skip to the bottom and say, on this person's goal of 90,000, with an average sales price of 250,000 and $400 in monthly expenses, plus a normal standard cap here, this person needs four listings and appointments a month, they need to take two listings, and they need to close two listings and buyers a month. For about $13,000 in GCI, for them to net $90,000 out of 12 months. Isn't that cool how that breaks it out? So I know you're working on yours. What kind of number, if you don't mind me asking, go for it. You're okay. I said for 2019 here, yep. uh, 100,000. Great. Uh, on a team that is different. So 6% isn't what you, we typically get. We typically get half of that. Now, if you're on a team, you usually get another half of that. So on a team, if you want to figure out your numbers, the calculator will do it. You might be 1.5% because if it's 3% and my team gets half, right, it might be higher than that, but that's just to help you estimate because the reality is if you're on a team, you have the same opportunity, but you might have to sell $4 million of sales versus $2 million of sales. Like, it's weird how it works out, but the whole goal is to help you understand how many sales you need. And what I've found is typically, if your team splits 50-50, you're gonna to need to double your goals of an individual agent to be on a team to hit the same goal. Does that make sense? It's, it's a little weird, but uh, I'll help bring clarity to that if you have any questions. So does that make sense how you can understand your goals? So anyone wanna share any of their goals? Like, Jenny, did you figure out how many listings or sales you need a month? So when I talk to you, is it okay if I ask you, how are your two sales going this month? And if I look at our monthly reports and I see Jenny did one, can I call you just to see, hey, how can I help you get three next month? Because the goal is to get you back on track. Because what's harder, being in December, saying, oh no, I need 10 sales, <laughs> or asking now to say, how do we help you get there? Right, okay, anyone else want to share their number of homes they need to sell? Yeah, Chris. Uh, For the whole year? So it's about three months, a little over three more. Yeah. yeah. So then when I talk to you, I'm going to ask how are your three or four closings going on? Right after the time. I'm going to ask you today. How are your three? <laughs> so that's the whole, does that feel uncomfortable or does that feel like, okay, thanks. I have clarity around it. The whole goal is for you to have clarity around your goals so you know where you're going and then we can help you. So um, if anyone's on a team, I want to show you real quick. There is a team portal for the teams. So any of my people on a team here, like I'll pull up like um, Heather uh, and Leslie are merging together to form a team. So this is how I pull it from a team standpoint. The team means you still have your individual goals and then we add it all together to say, how do we come up to the team goals? So this just helps us understand that. And then what this does for the team is tells me what your goals are and what you actually did. So like Sarah had a goal of seven listings, she took two, right? Or her goal was five here, sorry, she took two listings, which is good, and how do we help you get five? So the whole goal is just so you can help there, and then how do we help the teams coach each other? So I'll be coaching the team, the team will be coaching you, yet I can talk to you, either one, on the team standard of what you're doing, and your own. That's why this tool is so amazing, and, and you think it's simple, like does this seem like a hard tool, or does it seem like pretty easy? It's been out there for 14 years now, and the other companies have still not caught on that maybe I should ask my agents what they want and how can I help you. That's why I'm so glad that you're here, because mark my words, if you start tracking this, I promise you, our business is up 125% this year, yours 
will easily go past that, if not beyond. Because you're going to be aware of it, and we're going to ask you and help you get there. And when you hit the challenge, you rely on us to help you. So once I have those goals, I'm going to come back to KW Connect and my goals. Then I can go back to the bottom stuff, right? So the four conversations are how many listing appointments you have, and the tool I'm going to use after I know how many listings I need. So now you know. So in this example, this person needs four listing appointments, and I'm going to ask them how do your four appointments go this month? Did you get your two sales? Did you sell two of those listings? And in the middle, the tool that connects it is the pipeline report to tell me uh, an Excel sheet of who am I working with right now that's thinking about buying or selling. Because the goal is to move them from the pipeline to the closing table. And in order to do that, I gotta get them on the pipeline from an appointment. And an appointment to writing the contract, right? Like you see where the chain's going so that it all makes sense. Then I want to track listings monthly, so this is knowing I need four. Then there's going to be a sheet telling me what listings are active or under contract. So if I have four listings a month, I need to take, or it's two listings a month, I need to take four appointments, sorry. If I went on four appointments and I had one listing, I took one under contract, what do I got to do? Go get another listing. Like, I never stop the cycle. And the whole reason we do this is who loves when your business goes, yay, oh, yay, oh. Yay! Oh. Isn't that what it's doing? Isn't that what the number one thing agents tell you? Oh, it's a great season. Oh, it's a bad season. Well, you know the truth? The agent's doing it at a high level. There is no good or bad season. They planned their months, and if they know that December is a month they typically don't do sales, then they get them this year. So I looked at it last, last year. We brought clarity to it. So Leslie Ferguson, February wasn't, uh, she sold nothing in February last year and nothing in November. This year, she had sales in February. Her business is up 30% this year, and she already has closings already scheduled for those months. So now that she has clarity around it, she's not gonna have the yay, no, yay, no. She's gonna have a yay, 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 and it's just gonna keep going up. That's why we're bringing clarity to it. So the listings taken, the listings monthly is just your report of what do I have on the pipeline that's active, what's pending, what's sold, and what's coming on the market next, right? So I'll show you all those tools. The wall of value is the trend tool. So all the trend is, is what did I do last year? And what did I do this year? And what's the difference? Is it up? Is it down? Where's the difference? Right? That's what it's doing. So having clarity around that helps you. The agent lore is the language of real estate. How are we doing compared to the board of realtors? That's what this is. We're up in every category. That is a value statement you tell people when you go on a buyer's appointment or a listing appointment. Why should I choose you? Because I'm with an office that cares about helping clients get what they want and the truth that shows up and the fact that we're outperforming the board of realtors and the local agents in the area. And if that other agent could come to you and tell you if they're outperforming in every category, I would love to see that, <laughs> right? It's not about putting others down. It's about if we know this, then all we're competing against is what did I do last year? If November is my month of having zero, and Leslie does five deals this year, what's it gonna tell her? Her business is up 400% because she sold nothing last year. Do you get where that math comes in? So when it looks like we're comparing ourselves to other companies, we're not, we're comparing ourselves to ourselves, and the results show up that we're outperforming everybody else. So when we say the multi-year trend, the lore, it's you looking at what you did last year versus this year and tell if you're up or down, and if you're down, then what do we gotta do to get you up in the other months so that your business is up year over year? That's the clarity around it. Yes, all right. I found that using the lore out of listing appointments is the next best thing to getting a referral. You know, yes. referrals come listing to business for any of us because somebody else has recommended you, so they already like you and trust you before you walk in the door. So it's really easy to walk in on a referral and just get a contract signed. But when you don't have that, I love taking the lore with me because you're giving that consumer the confidence that you have the ability to get the job done every time. And if you don't have a lore if you're new to the business, use the market center's lore and then use us as a tool for supporting you with that listing or with that client to get the job done because we have a tremendous amount of experience in this room. And I, I personally use it with people that, I, that don't know me from Adam and I've won every listing that I've been in on. It takes the emotion out of it. What do they really want? To work with the best company. The data says you're the best company to work with. Why wouldn't I work with you? And what do people do when they go in there? Well, choose me, because I've got the best sign in the yard. Or 
okay, well, where's the data to prove you have the best sign in the yard, right? That's what this is doing. So if you look at the paper I gave you to begin with, the old economic model was doing it by paper for years. So for the last four years I've been with KW, almost five years, I used to have to do this with paper. And the calculator now does it for me, right? It asks you, what are your goals? Where do you want to go? What's your source of business? Average commission, right? All the things we just did with the calculator in a few clicks. And to plus it, since you all set your goals, take out Kelly and ask Kelly what your goals are. Because here's what I'm going to show you that happens. So I will open it. I'm sending a referral. What are my goals? And what Kelly does is our artificial intelligence, Kelly pulls up my goals and tells me what my goals are for the month. So this tells me I need four appointments. I've taken zero. I need two listings. I've taken zero. And I need two closings. I've taken zero. And I've reached zero of my 13000 gross commission income. So what this does is take the paper and it's a virtual assistant that will now tell me how my goals are going for the month. Because when you take a listing, we know about it. When you have a closing, we know about it. When you get paid, we know about it because we paid you and our system tracks that part. The part it doesn't track that you have to tell it is what appointment you went. That you're gonna have to manually track for now. Eventually, it'll figure it out. So isn't that a cool way to use Kelly and integrate your business? So now are we having a conversation with you, your artificial intelligence can have that conversation with you every day, every hour. You can meet clients and say, look, I'm committed to helping four families a month. Let me show you. Hey, Kelly, what are my goals? Right there, four families a month. That's what I'm here to do, right? It's a different conversation. And then ultimately, the local expert just takes a couple metrics. So instead of being all of this, we need to pick two numbers to focus on. Hey, what really matters out of all these numbers? Listing sold. And closings, because that tells you you did something. Taking a listing doesn't guarantee a sale. Writing a contract doesn't guarantee a sale. So those would be the measurements I would put on the local expert. Is that she saying, why should I hire you? Because here's my numbers. We're selling more real estate than everybody else. We're closing more listings than everybody else. Because isn't that what matters? Didn't you hire me to sell your home or get that home that you want? That's really the numbers that matter to them. Is this overwhelms them? Pick one or two that are good, right? And then through there, that should wall of value because that explains why it was great to sign up for me. And that leads to your closings. So then we can track, okay, I have two closings a month. Buyers or sellers, it doesn't matter, right? Because the closing means we got paid. And then through that, the listing management tool then tells me I need more listings, right? Because I just sold one I had. And there's a calculator there. They said the GCI, there's one called Daily Company Dollar. So we use it for the market center, which means every time I close something, how close am I to hitting my equal point? So if it was $13,000 a month of income coming in, at what point do I have enough sales to say, hey, you broke me, and now everything extra is profit, right? All it is is a monthly accountability tool to see how close are you to breaking even for the month or paying all your bills or earning a profit. You see how it's running like a business now? Does it make sense when we say things like, you train in a green sheet, is my listing management. Because that tells me what money is coming in soon so that we can properly budget we have enough money in account or are we not going to have enough money sometimes. Right? That's our indicator of it. We bring more agents in, which we know then leads to you guys getting more listings, which then leads the whole pipeline. So my little flow chart is just like yours. The tools may be called something different, but I'm doing the same thing you are, just in a different any questions on that little tool, right? The four conversations make sense. So we're going to have better conversations now, right? Because we're going to ask about this more often. I will share it with you, and I'll ask you guys how you're doing. And if you have questions along the way, that's what we're here for. Ask me, ask Karen, ask Rachel. We understand these tools. We're getting better at it. We'll connect you to the dots if you're not sure. So then there's the little four conversations. This is the one you do every month. This is what you can put up on your wall. This is what the market centers have on their wall everywhere, saying how many actual appointments did you go on this month and how many were you supposed to go on? So in this example, if I was supposed to go on four, my goal would be four, and my appointments, well right now, my appointments are supposed to be 40, and I'm at um, 10. So I've got 30 more between now and the first of the next month, right? So that tells me how close am I hitting there, and then listings taken for you, the goal here was to take two of those. For me, it's 10, and I fired three, right? The correlation.
inflation there, the wall of value, then your closings, how many do you need, and ultimately how do you reach your profit goal and how close are you? So having this monthly means you're not wondering what am I doing this month and how am I? There's clarity around what you should be doing and how do you do it. So I have people laminate that and then put it up on their wall. Um, you guys can print out a copy of it every week. It's here for you to download and print out. That's what you should carry around with you. So when I ask you, I can see it here. Now yes, I can pull up the CGI goals, but if you have this, are you more likely to be aware of it? Or just ask Kelly and she'll tell you and remind you of your goals and then the traction will be there as well. Yes. So uh, if I'm on a team and my team allows me to list in or requires, is an appointment an appointment? A cylinder listing appointment if my goal is seven? Yes. Count so every appointment I'm going to need to hire a seller's appointment with my actual Yeah, they'll both count. Here's the reality. If you're a team, it gives you the role when you're on a team. When you go to your calculator, it says, are you a listing agent, buyer's agent, or both? And then it will do the math for you. So you'll need to look up the specifics. For some of you teams, we're still learning that tool together. So let us know. We'll set up a team day to look at this together and make sure you guys have clarity around this. So the next part is what you saw in the video. That's the back side of the first page is what do these tools matter then? Well, listing management is really just how many listings do you need, right? It's keeping track of it. So the listing management tool right here just pulls you to the calculator, right? So there's a version of it here for the management for rate makers. And if you're on a team, you just access the calculator. The calculator figures out how many listings do you need to take. From there, it goes to listings monthly, meaning how many listings do you currently have and how many are you supposed to have, right? Your actual list of your active listings. Which then leads to your pipeline, which is who am I working with? And there's a tab for buyers, there's a tab for sellers, and I challenge you to use the sheet to add a tab for profit share. Add a tab for agents and keep track of who you're talking to. Who would you invite to a class? Who are you making deals with? That way, you can do the same thing for the pipeline report and help build or erase your cap by tracking it. So that tool is down here below, and that's in your handouts as well. Each tool, by the way, has a video explaining it and a tool to download. So everything I gave you in the packet is downloadable here on the website. And there's a video on each one. I'm not gonna bore you watching each video. I just want you to have clarity around why these tools matter and then each one will show you how to get them there to eventually track what you're working with. So what this is gonna do at the end is this becomes your story, by the way. If your trend says, I'm doing better than I was last year, that's a story. If the agent floor of market share, we're now um, number five in the area on listing volume and number six in the office by units sold. Last year, by the way, we were number 11 and number 12. That's a story. We've grown more than double our business from last year because we were not even in the top 10 and now we're in the top five. And we're gonna keep growing because you guys are doing well, right? That becomes a story that local experts just the market insight. Maybe it's the neighborhood. I sold more listings here than anybody else. So I have 50% market share in this neighborhood. Why don't you tell that, right? Leslie's working her market, Heather's working her market saying, hey, I'm the main listing area in here because I sell more than anybody else. And isn't that what they're looking for? The top salesperson in that area? So why aren't we telling their story? That's what those tools do. And all that together package is what's gonna help you make more money than anybody else and earn the most money that you want. It's not about competing against others. It's really a competition with yourself and clarity around what you should be doing to get what you need. Does that make sense? Does this bring a little more clarity about why we've been talking to? I just realized I don't think we understood the why behind it. Why am I asking things about that? Why do I talk about appointments all the time when I help here? It's to help you guys. So anyone who tells me right now, like last month, all full transparency, Aaron, did we hire anybody last month in July? Zero. Did I hit my appointments? Zero, right? I had 27 out of the 40. So what that told me was, okay, what was the result? Well, it was my pipeline. I didn't have enough people in the pipeline that 90 days later, July came and they weren't there, right? So what do we do to fix that? Well, we increase our appointments and we notice we weren't paying attention sometimes to all the tools, so now we check in on it more. We'll get there because now we're being more purposeful. 
We looked at where the leads were coming from before and saw my opportunities, and now I'm focused on getting more business. How often so, are we looking at those numbers? Daily. Daily. We're going to look at it daily because we weren't looking at it often enough, and then we're getting to the end of the month when what happened when we could have fixed it three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Right? What is your commitment to that? And here's the reality. When I look at those numbers, um, it's just helping me get where I need to go. It's the clarity around it. Right? And what am I going to do differently? So what I know is if you're off in any of these areas, then we know how to coach you. If it's I went on 10 appointments and I only took two, okay, let's talk about your listing appointment. How do we get you on a better script? What were your challenges? What were your objections? Right? Or if it's I take all these listings and none of them are selling, okay, well, then what can we do differently? The price is wrong, right? There's there's learning in the nooks and crannies of all that, but it all boils down to the same thing. Do you see that? Does that bring a little more clarity around it? Is it okay if we talk more like this, have more conversation about this? Every month we're gonna do this one. So do you think other people who don't have clarity around goals will benefit from this no matter what company they're with? Yeah. It'll have tremendous value. Right? That's what we're here to do. Yes, Jen. Um, there is, I think you can ask Kelly, but I will find, I'll show you the reports. Um, there are a whole reporting system for agent reports, so we'll get you your year to date number um, and clarity around that. Um, that's a great one, just not right here, if that makes sense. So we'll look it up there. Um, so know what these numbers are, and this is why we want to help you tell the story. If you don't have your own metrics or if you're newer in the business, that's when you use our story. If you need help pulling up your numbers from last year, I can use our system. Um, even though you work with KW, we can use broker metrics and pull up your data from last year. Here's what I do know. So in this area, we have 800 agents that are selling real estate in Allen County. Out of those, 240 qualify for what we call a capper, meaning they're doing at least 2.6 million in sales or more in the last 12 months. Out of those, 101 of them, their business is down this year. That tells me there's a huge opportunity of 101 people plus that we probably could talk to who would benefit from class, a training, or something. All we need to do to help them is ask two questions. How are your goals going and do you have goals? Because if you don't, join us for our next business planning clinic. And what is your greatest challenge right now? Because I know what the answer is. It's usually around listings or it might be around negotiations. It could be around lead generation. We have three of those classes coming up in the next three weeks. Or it's one of the other things that they need. There's always training, coaching, support, for whatever they say. It doesn't matter the answer. So help them. No different than you helping a client, saying, I need to move to Chicago, just help them. How can I help you? Let me connect you with someone. So we've got to play the GCI call right now. It's a live stream video. Stay for that. If you have more questions, bring it to me. But this is a valuable conversation. We're going to keep it going and have this conversation more often. Is that all right with everybody? All right, so since we're here,